Graham off of. Well, do we want to do uh, the intro here before we uh, go any further? Yeah. Uh, if we're live? Yeah, we're live uh, now. What, oh, okay. What time is it anyway? Or do we have? Uh, it is 1.28. 1.28. Well, we're actually early, <laughs> which is a major, a major miracle. Yeah. Um, here we are uh, at the uh, here we are. February uh, now, 2019 uh, edition of the Chicago TI User Group. We're located in Evanston, Illinois, at the Evanston Public Library. And we're, uh, we're fortunate to have a full crew today. Um, our president, Dick Sturp, is here. Uh, our uh, technical director, um, Jim Mazurk. Our technical visiting uh, uh, songwriter, singer, uh, also a technical expert, TI -er, old time TI -er, uh, Owen Brandt. Uh, Buck Brandt is also here over in the corner. And uh, I'm here as well, Hal Shanfield, Fair Manager, Secretary, and General Dog's Body. Um, Vic, what are we going to do today? Well, I'm trying to find my intro screen. I know I got it here someplace. <laughs> We're running. Uh, uh, Rich uh, XB 2015 off of cartridge. So I'm going to step through here and do a catalog on what's in drive number two, which seems to be a backup of the uh, original compact flash utilities I had. All right, lots of adventures the past month. My compact flash. Utility card failed, so I mailed it back to the arcade shopper, and I'm going to be uh, buying a different card. Uh, that card was uh, over 10 years old. I had bought that at the 2008 Chicago TI Fair from uh, Bill Haskell, who was uh, distributing them for the uh, manufacturer at that time. And he said, gee, I don't know, I might be bringing some of these back. Well, they sold out so darn fast. <laughs> he didn't bring any of them back. So uh, I've had it for 10 years, and it's worked, and it's worked good until I got the final Grom uh, cartridge, which lets you take cartridge dumps of uh, any cartridge, and you can run it off of this cartridge. And uh, it didn't play nice. I noticed the final Grom ran just fine without the compact flash plugged in, and it wouldn't run uh, with it plugged in. So I had to, uh, I went back and forth and back and forth on it. The uh, cartridges on the final Grom, uh, some of them require 32K to operate. Uh, usually it's the homebrew cartridges and things like that. So we were cataloging Excuse me here. <clears throat> I sent invites to every freaking page on the planet so we should okay. have some chatters here soon. Yeah. Uh, this is the compact flash manager where you can have a disk manager and you can do everything on the compact flash. Copy from file to file. Uh, just like you can with the DM1000 uh, for uh, physical floppies. And the thing I'm interested in most is the volume manager. Or here we can uh, raise list, format, or name, backup, catalog. And here it just lists all the software that I have on this one particular compact flash card. And it starts, actually this is the Chicago User Group library. They're in the same volume number as the actual physical floppy. And this only works up to a point until you get to the Chicago library of 170. And that was the end of the original Chicago library. And then there was a supplement version, uh, uh, section two it stops at 170, and when the second uh, library was released, it started at disk 200. Well, there goes my nice numbering <laughs> scene, uh, theme. <laughs> That'll teach you. 
So I'm just flipping through this pretty quick because, okay, this goes all the way up to 234 is the Chicago Library. At 235, at the end of it, is my personal work disk, which is the one we're using right now, the Compact Flash Utilities disk. I renamed it Vic Work. And then when I bought my Compact Flash, it came preloaded with a uh, smaller capacity uh, Compact Flash card rather than the two gig. And it had a also a backup CD of all the software that was on the Compact Flash card. The utilities, plus a bunch of games like the MS Adventure, uh, Quasimodo, it has PC99 on it. Another one, Game Pack. Uh, what was interesting was the uh, uh, Bill had also included a lot of his cataloging programs on the, uh, here we are, TI Base. And then he had a cartridge organizer program uh, specifically where you could list, list in all the cartridges you have and manage that as a uh, file card uh, database here. The DBM system, da database manager system, was also on that CD. And I had the uh, AFL, I think the uh, one of these was like the Altman Fairware Library catalog of all the different disks they had. So all these can be run pretty easily. I left some blank disks in between these various libraries just so I can, when I run this screen, I could sort of figure out where I was at. Uh, the next thing on here would be the, uh, let me see here, ah yeah, this looks familiar. The uh, Chris Bobbitt had released the Asgard software collection, supposedly every disc that Asgard ever did. I included that on this. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the discs, especially the ones with the most interesting names, don't seem to work. Uh, Does Play-Doh work? No, I tried that a few times, yeah, and I used a Supercart. And uh, I can't seem to find a Play-Doh cartridge emulator that works. Uh, people have even emailed me the one. files, and I can't seem to get those to work. I've got the cartridge. I'll bring the uh, I'll bring my Play-Doh mm -hmm. next time. And, uh, so these are all, all these files are all the uh, from Chris Bobbitt and VUOTO 360. I don't know what that stands for, but a lot of the discs have that name. Um, when I start loading the Tiger Cub on here. I renamed a lot of the disks to the same name. Yeah, see, here's my placeholders. I left a bunch of blank disks there. Because sometimes you find stuff after you put it on the compact flash card, and then you can't have it in contiguous order with the rest of the files. Uh, yeah, Tunnels of Doom works. How, uh, how many actual disks do you have on there? On a two gig, or is this a one gig? On a one gig compact flash card, you can have 1,251 virtual floppy disks in storage. So this made some sort of external record keeping either on a tablet, in a text file, or in a uh, uh, spreadsheet program, or anything. So I could tell where everything was at, because if somebody said to me, uh, hey, Vic, run Legends 2. Okay, I can look it up. All right, it's on disk 5.8. On uh, Tiger Cub, I started renaming the disks to match up. Now, here we go, like Tiger Cub 6.12. And it turns out that some of the uh, disks look for the particular disk name, like multi-plan loops yeah, for a disk in any plan. drive called TIMP, as an example. And so some of these you'll see just have a regular disk name on it rather than the Tiger Cub abbreviation. Like uh, 676 is Tiger Cub 796A.
I also had uh, some difficulty loading a lot of these Tiger Cub discs onto the compact flash card because the uh, PC file name was too long. And uh, Fred Call's uh, TIDIR program, while it's excellent, can only handle a file name that's only so many characters. It's like it's a you know 16-bit program, not a 32-bit program. So it's only got so many fingers and toes to count on. Yeah, so this is all uh, of the Tiger Cub library here. And these are rather cryptic. So what you need uh, is a uh, floppy disk that has the index of the Tiger Cub. Uh, listing. Ah, like this one. The Tiger Cub catalog is on uh, DV80 files, and so you can search it that way, or you can find the entire catalog. I had gotten, oh, here's the Lima library, the same game. And this one, even though it says Starfort, it was a convenient disc I had laying around, there's the Altman fairware list. So if I put each of these discs on the compact flash card, I could look everything up on that and see where it's at. Otherwise, I have to do it the hard way. And uh, go through with one of my loose leaf num binders you go, well, here's the compact flash volume number. Here's the PC name that I'll see in uh, TIDIR. Here's the TI name, R2-2, and the file size and how many are used. And it's the only way I can find anything. Otherwise, it's like trying to walk around in a uh, public library without the Dewey Decimal System in a file card cabinet. I can't find anything. So my question is, as usual, when do you sleep? Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm waiting until after I retire for that. Because this is just his TI program, TI hobby. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, he does all this other stuff. Plus, he works, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. So this is all Tiger Cub. Uh, again, that's the on this card. That's where I stopped. This is 1,086, and everything else is just blank after that point. <clears throat> how many uh, how many volumes, 1,600 sector volumes, can you get on a 2 gigabyte <clears throat> CF card? Uh, that was in the uh, chatter on the TI-99ers, too. Uh, somebody was having trouble with uh, with his compact flash device, getting it to format and everything else. Uh, I think he replaced his card. That's what inspired me to send in mine. Um, I think it's double the m number, so if it's 1,251 on a 1 gig, It'd be uh, uh, over 2,000. Over yeah. After. Okay, so that we were running Rich Extended Basic, which is a great cartridge worth getting, because you have your uh, you have your disk manager. You can catalog a disk. Well, this one's yours. It is. It doesn't work. <laughs> I haven't even plugged it in yet. Well, you've got a red light, and when the red light stops blinking, or if it don't stop blinking, you have to uh, hit the... Uh... Well, this one doesn't stop blinking, so let me power off the console and move it. I'll try mine which I asked for custom color buttons on my final gram so I could tell the difference between the final gram reset button and the TI console reset button. So let's see how mine are blinking. I can press and hold the reset button and the red light stops blinking. So we should get, when you select the any key, the final gram menu. Okay, this is the original final gram menu that I couldn't get when I had my compact flash device hooked up because for some reason it was fighting with it. Uh, each one of these 
has subdirectories in it and a whole bunch of stuff. So if we press A, we get to the next screen, which is this is all demos. And you notice we're on page number one of two. Comma takes you back, period takes you four. I'll press the period. Now we're on page number two of two of the demos. So if I press S, this is from the SID library. And it just does that forever. So I hit the reset on my console. But now if I go back, it still has vertical bars selected. So I have to press the left side reset button. The light blinks once and it comes back. It would never do this with my compact flash device hooked up. That's strange. <clears throat> this, is a, this is a really, really old CF7. Mm -hmm. Well, I think maybe mine was failing because eventually it stopped working and I couldn't get the color bar screen anymore. I'm the 1980s. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is uh, development type stuff. We have uh, extended basic uh, version 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, easy bug, FB4, and FB4 80 column. Everybody here's a fourth fan, so let's try K. And now you're in FB4. And with the compact flash, we can have a fourth disc and drive one, two, or three, and you can work with it just like regular FB4. Of course, it also won't let you quit either. Again, color bar screen, and there you are. FB fourth O or FB fourth 80 column. So here's what FB fourth looks like in 80 column. Oh, that's nice. Mm hmm. Because uh, TI fourth, most force will try to default to a 64 column wide screen. The TI is 40, and this is 80. So 64, they redefined the character set slightly, and it was a, a desirable thing to use when you were uh, programming with, uh, with fourth. Uh, re press the left button, reset the final ground again. Press B for development. And we had uh, regular fourth, uh, load and run basic, Oh, Mechatronic Extended Basic. This was interesting because I think somewhere on here is a Mechatronic Extended Basic demo. And I got excited when I looked at some of the commands in there because that very elusive advertiser cartridge seemed to have a lot of uh, similar or same commands. So I was wondering if they wrote Mechatronics after they had gotten the advertiser cartridge in Europe uh, advertiser was a demonstration cartridge and it could make uh, boxes and squares and so scrolling stuff and do all sorts of split screen and wonderful stuff um, but uh, it'd be interesting to see if we could finally get the advertiser cartridge got mini memory I'll press the period button because we have two screens of stuff oh a Pascal bootloader and a Pascal downloader and a Pascal TID bug and here we have our old friend Rich Extended Basic 2015, the one with the menu, no menu, and the version 2002. Uh, one of my favorite cartridges was the uh, Triton uh, uh, Super Extended Basic. It was worth the money because if you selected two for Extended Basic and held the key down, it would bypass the automatic search for a program called Load. So it eliminated the rigmarole of having to take the disk out of the drive if you didn't want it to automatically run Load. Oh, here we go again. Turbo fourth. I'll go with the standard turbo fourth. I'm pressing letter P. And there's regular turbo fourth. Again, it's an error because it's not finding a fourth disk. Reset the final ground. Oh, what were we on? B for development. Skip over a screen. Now we'll go for the letter O, uh, Turbo Fourth 80 column. And there you are, Turbo Fourth and 80 column. So 
so it's white on a uh, dark blue screen. Reset the final ground. Uh, we'll go to C, education. Now this is interesting, because here you have the uh, milk and math and DLM, who the heck was DLM? I forget what it was. Uh, with the Press B to find out. <laughs> Press B to find out, there you go. Okay, alligator edition, <laughs> alien edition, demolition division, dragon. So this is all that <clears throat> edutainment. <laughs> DLM. Okay, it doesn't say what their name is. But it's just stepping through here. I'm not doing anything. I pressed uh, function 7, 8. Skill level 1 through 9. <laughs> problem range. Press number. Uh, and exit game control. Press the any key. So hell was three plus four. Uh, 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 oh, how doing math? Uh, 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 yeah, this is Alien Edition. It's a combination of Space Invaders and. Well, I'll go with twelve. <laughs> no, no, that didn't work. Now we're doomed. Nine plus one. Uh, no, it's not zero. Okay, so here's the DLM educational game. I saw a t-shirt that said everything was okay until Satan put the alphabet into mathematics. Yeah, I've posted that a couple times. Uh, here we are again. Let's go to C for Millican. And see what Millican Maths edition is. Ah, 1982, they're old uh, black on the cyan screen. <laughs> Let the computer user group uh, take the heat for this. Okay. Let's see if it'll take a decimal. Okay, so after three wrong answers, it gives you the correct answer. Oh, you get a reward. Bird, a butterfly, a totem pole. It's a happy totem pole. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we can alter this so that for adults you could uh, get a different graphic. Tony Z could, because yeah. he did the uh, TI demo, where he modified the demo program. Yeah. Okay, so this we're just running through representative examples of what's on the final ground card. <sighs> for stuff specific to the F-18, uh, we ran this last uh, well, didn't we? Cortex basic, basic Palius P yeah. monitor. Yeah, we went through all this last time. Yeah. This was the Cortex basic. Mm -hmm. I never know who's going to be interested in what. Reset the. Uh, Jim, who have we got watching us today? Okay, say I'm at this screen and I want to go back, I press the A key and that takes you up a one. So I'll take us back up. Uh, e for games, I find sort of ponderous with this card because it does it all by alphabetical order. This is where my uh, final ground would hang up on the compact flash. Because uh, it didn't want to go through subdirectories like this. Okay. But let's see um, all the files that are on, uh, on letter C. So I'll press E. And Cannonball Blitz. A Cannonball Blitz was never released as a cartridge. That's an uh, EA5 uh, game. That was only on disc. Card Sharp.
Carvors. Carvors was released as a cartridge. Castle Conquer, Cave Creatures, uh, they were always floppy. A Centipede, another Atari Soft, uh, that was on a cartridge. So some of these are on cartridge, some aren't. Uh, Crossfire was a elusive for a long time. I remember at one fair when I actually saw Crossfire available. Press A. Uh, we have two pages here. Uh, what's a what game begins with the letter Z? There is none. There's nothing listed there. So games under hacks. We have Centipede, Defender, and Parsec. I don't know why it would be considered a hack. Somebody might have gone and jacked the code or something. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sharp enough with uh, Centipede. Uh, this is black and a dark, what, like blue or purple? Okay, Alpha Lock Up, press Enter. And here you've got your little. Which is a subtle way of saying you should like balance his camera before he puts it up the screen. But that requires some effort on my part. Mm. I think it's more interesting this way. Mm -hmm. And that's how the game usually ends for me. So you got a ton of games on here. What was that one game I said it's on here? Uh, this is under Hacks, Astro Cube, Axel F, that's that music from Beverly Hills Cop, uh, real nice demo, but that was floppy only, that was never on a, uh, here, and here we got all the Ras a lot of Rasmus stuff, Bouncy, Flappy Bird, Flying Shark, uh, Jetpack. Have you tried the Eric and Monster Land yet? Been able to play it for real? Well, now it does, because that problem seemed to be my compact flash rather than the cartridge. Oh, th I had two problems. My F-18 video upgrade was version 1, and I had to upgrade it to version 2. Mm -hmm. And actually, on the Final Grom cartridge, that program's on here. So I tried a couple times to like download it and put it on a card and stuff like that. I could never quite seem to figure it out. Oh, the update. The update program is actually on there, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Well, here you go. Let's touch the other guy. I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, he always died as uh, soon as the on screen character, which is that little yeah, uh, white that. guy, every time the program started, and that was an artifact in my uh, F 18 version 1. Okay, let's jump over the something fire. Weird with the sprite detect, sprite the background detection or something. Take your clothes off before you jump over a fire. Why couldn't I jump on. over that? That's weird. You have to be going right, I think, and then jump. Is that tree in the middle going to eat him or something? It looks pretty creepy, doesn't it? That's what usually yeah, happens to me. The, probably use I mean, the. He's uh, just upset that someone is such. We're using a set of room. stock TI joysticks here, which are actually my favorite. And I bring them to every meeting, but at home I have one of those where they have a uh, tire valve stem as the joystick yeah, handle. The slick stick. <coughs> the slick stick yeah, yeah. yeah. and I have a couple of the other uh, joysticks that were available when they were sold. This one's a little tricky because you got to jump over the fire, <laughs> but not jump into the canyon. You got to duck the bird. Yes, they give you the bird. They give you. Jump the arrow. Ah, I got one. <laughs> okay, so it works fine on this console now. You can't, uh, you can't, oh yeah, you can duck. I mm -hmm. see. But uh, see, they have a uh, time piece. Darn. Uh, they have a timekeeper that which at the top of the uh, screen is you're racing against her. Yeah, Butterfingers. Okay, so Eric and Monster Land works. So 
those like hacks. No. Homebrew. Uh, we have two pages here on homebrew. Road Hunter, Saber Wolf, Skyway. Uh, those are fun. Uh, Super Mario Brothers. That was another weird one with my old F-18. All you saw was a plain field full of clouds. There was nothing to interact with. Mm. Although your on-screen characters seem to run into stuff. Uh, but now on this version, it works correctly. You have the entire screen displayed. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought there was some parallax scrolling in this. Maybe I'm wrong. They have like the mountains in the background. Or Maybe this is, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, let me not do that again. Yeah, you don't have to uh, retrieve the coins. It seems like you pick them up automatically. There, now you've got Big Mario. And as usual... No, I went past it. can't go down the pipes. <laughs> That's how I usually play this game. But Mario Brothers, uh, Mario World works good. I'm really glad your system's back to yeah, yeah. snuff now. That's great. Yeah, it was uh, frustrating there. I had two separate problems. So we had, uh, oh, Titanium, GI Scramble. I'm sure everybody's familiar with that one. Uh, <laughs> Skyway was fun. Because you've got the marble on the uh, elevated roadway. Use it by Tercy. I raised most of the Oh, that's the fun game here. Yeah, pick up the uh, tokens, avoid the holes in the world. I'll go slow you down. <laughs> I jumped, but I didn't bridge the gap. So yeah, so in Skyway, they give you a whole bunch of other obstacles you have to try to overcome. <laughs> it's after the world square, so I've got to jump. And that's how that game usually ends for me. <laughs> no, you didn't come here to see somebody else play a game, so I just wanted to go through this menu. Sure they play. did. That's exactly why they're here, Vic. <laughs> okay, H, tools. 32K uh, base tools. The TI-99, Home Century. Remember that one? Yeah, I, would, yeah. Um, I just saw uh, John Guidry's uh, cartridge for Home Century. Now, how does that work? Oh, poor comp. 99, Home Century. Check and control the collection. Okay, we don't have the uh, P box with the TI uh, with the uh, Corcom controller uh, hooked up, so you can't load the controller information. This is as far as we can go until we hook up the uh, the P box. So I'll quit this. For what, now. Uh, what did Home Century do? Did turn on the lights and stuff? I think so. It was like a Need those X uh, X interface or whatever? Yeah. I, got, I bought a bunch of those things and never figured out how to properly use them. Maybe yeah. I could. Uh, so home century accounting, uh, some school teacher stuff, activity accountant, attendance recorder, budget management, class data recorder, council writer, course <laughs> manager, uh, oh, default okay. T2 demonstration. No. This rolled from the TI demonstration cartridge. Love it. <laughs> you 
you know, <clears throat> this program book was, um, this is what they used, this is the cartridge they put in at the stores. Mm -hmm. and walk by and watch it demonstrate. It makes them more like a computer. Yeah. I and think the advertiser was created as a more comprehensive uh, thing because they had like uh, car balls yeah. and stuff like that. We were poking around with that last time. Yeah, but 40 years ago, this was, mm -hmm. this was magic. Magic. Absolute magic. Hmm. If you were a kid 40 years ago, uh, you could see the future, and uh, whereas adults could only see the $1,500 price tag for the, for, the, yeah, for the console and the P-Box and the monitor, $1,500, and then $200 for Parsec. <coughs> Uh, mm -hmm. T.I. Writer and on and on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Vic, I think I want to fix this cartridge. Yeah, there we go. The, uh, the snap-in connector in mm -hmm. there was loose, and I had to kind of crimp it back down, and now, oh. it, now it snaps in and out, so it may even work now. I don't know. Okay, we'll give it a try. We'll try a little later. Yeah, and uh, when you consider, all this stuff is on a 2 gig SD card. <laughs> You know, so you've got an incredible amount of cartridge software. Uh, diagnostics tests. 1979. Oh. Uh, we'll press one for automatic test. For checkerboard test. Okay. Now I don't know if this thing times out or what. Okay. It came back. To test with address. Hmm. Back, Dad. I'm pressing enter to get back and three input test pattern. Type in chicken. Oh, I thought it would be like an AO. <laughs> I have no idea. Type in a pattern? Hmm. No. It probably puts well, it all across well, the screen. Let me hit enter and it probably Oh, it must be hex. It must be. Okay. Okay. Two keyboard test. That's cool. Oh, you can't be just walk across your keyboard. <laughs> okay. RAM test. Checkerboard test. <laughs> was it checking the VRAM there in the console? Is that what it's doing? Or the scratch pad RAM? What's the I don't know what it's doing. This is a 1979 test program. Interesting. Well, try the sound test. See what that means. Number five. Oh, there's a third. Oh, the input a test pattern. <laughs> Video display, pattern mode test. Okay, this looks like something on the missing link. Actually, isn't this on the missing link demo? Mm -hmm. Looks awful familiar. Yeah, it's very similar to the sprite demo. I think the direction of the multicolor game test. Game. Ooh. Yeah. Now, as you remember, when they came out with the game Rock Runner, they got that real nice sparkling effect on the uh, jewels by being in multicolor mm -hmm. mode. Something that uh, everybody had forgotten about until that person had written that game. Where instead of every 8x8 eight eight character graphic square being one of two colors, you could have every 4x4 four four square be one of two colors. Was that half bitmap graphics? Or what yeah, yeah, you, so you increase the resolution quite a bit. And text mode test. Hmm. Again, I know on the missing link, since it's working with a graphics screen, it can do all sorts of tricks with the text, like adjusting the size of the text, the spacing between lines, uh, and they got one screen like this. They can put it into boxes, individual boxes, right? Mm-hmm. Top and they pop, uh, pop up boxes.
Yeah, by running uh, two sounds like noise and tone one, two, or three at the same time, you can actually get below 440 hertz on this thing. You can't do bass notes straight out on the TI, but if you combine the two notes. Hmm. I've tried running a lot of these music discs through a sound processor and I found that the uh, music discs actually sound pretty good as it is. Hmm. Like reverb or something like that doesn't uh, change the sound of them very much. I've got this here. Oh yeah, the GI Cent Trail Plus, yeah. Yeah, I got about 15 copies of this disc, really? but I was looking for the one, well it's also in the Tiger Cub, in the Altman Fairburn Library and stuff like that on that thumb drive I gave away last fall. Hmm. Um, there's a South Pacific disc that Ken Gilliland did. Oh wow. And, uh, what is it? People are my favorite. What is yeah. that one? This is a... Yeah, I, I run that stuff once in a while. What I was trying to say was... Uh, I'm trying to remember what's a... Oh, it's hilarious seeing the profiles of the lead uh, male and female leads from South Pacific uh, silhouetted facing each other. And the male is singing some enchanted evening <laughs> you will find a stranger <laughs> and uh, it, it's just hilarious uh, a cousin of that is stuff that was written a long time ago with Rocky Robot and his twin uh, telling robot jokes and I think there's three collections of robot jokes I think uh, I plus those good. guys have showed up on an educational program too and uh, it's, it's just silly with the voices. Huh. Well, you remember that uh, program uh, that allowed you to put speech into your program using a cassette recorder. Remember that one? Digicent. Did you, but was that by Emmanuel Vittori or who <coughs> did that? Uh, yeah, we demoed that about, oh, that had to be about seven Ye or eight years ago. Years ago, yeah. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Digicent, yeah. You could record any sound on a cassette recorder or on anything and play it in through the cassette port of the TI with this guy's program running, and it would save it. And his demonstration program on the disc was called Submarine. So when it started, the uh, title screen would load, and then the disc would spin, and you would hear his accented voice, because I think he's Italian, saying Submarine and uh, it was pretty good and then you'd launch your torpedo at the enemy ships and you would get a hit or uh, a miss or you know something like that and it was just to demonstrate it he originally thought that uh, the volume was really touchy but then he uh, later amended that to you had to use a good quality tape recorder to record the sounds yeah i remember that yeah. hmm. And so I played around with it a little bit with my cassette recorder that I got sitting on my desk next to the TI and uh, with various results. Uh, here we are on page two of three on utilities here. Super disk manager, tax records, video. Ah, here we go. Update the F-18. Wow, that's really neat. So there we are. And here on the final grom on the default uh, card that came with it, uh, found V18 version 1.8, update file is version 1.8. So when I first loaded this in, I think I had found F18 file 1.1. And there's no sense in doing this over again. But we'll just quit. Well, that's kind of neat. It changes. Green color. Well, I notice every time it starts up now, I've got the F-18 version 1.8 announcement in the upper corner for about five seconds, hmm. and then it goes away. And that's only when the console's reset. Uh, so that's pretty nice. I'm going to turn this all off. 
and extract my final ground cartridge and put in Owen's cartridge here. Three things. When you first turn these, plug these cartridges in and turn them on, a red light will blink here as the computer reads the files that are on the cartridge. And then you press this red button to reset it. If you just want to reset the console without resetting the cartridge, you would press the button on the right. And I had a color code in blue and red. Okay, I'm going to turn the console back on. And unfortunately, Final Ground Owen brought in never stops blinking red. And you don't get a Final Ground menu on here. I have to tell them this one doesn't work. Now here's the previous cartridge. It was the Flash ROM 99 that let you use any C and D files on an SD card, which is pretty much all the aftermarket cartridges that were made for the TI. It won't run any TI cartridges because they use a letter uh, G ground file. So here's our Flash ROM. Uh, no, I just tried it, and it doesn't, you know, red light blinks forever. Really? Okay. Yeah. So uh, here's all the uh, stuff. Boy, I wish I had this cartridge when John Phillips paid us a visit a few years ago, because uh, we have the, uh, uh, I had a lot of stuff that he had done on it. So we got four screens. I'm going to press the period here. This is screen one. Screen two. Oh, again, we got FB4, FB4, 80 count. Yeah, none of these use a ground. Mr. Chin, Microsurgeon, a lot of my favorite games here. Mars Attack. Sounds awful familiar. This is by my uh, buddy in uh, Italy, uh, Francesco. Oh, God. He in chat yeah. says my final ground 99 does the same thing with LED blinking until I press the left button. Yeah, it'll mm -hmm. it'll work until you press the left button. It says. Okay, I did press the left button. I'll try it again. I'll try holding it down longer. And uh, yeah, so Francesco uh, did this. It's in Italian. Um, Maybe you need to. I wish she could make a. Maybe it's it, possible if we switch cards. Maybe the card is corrupted. Maybe, that's Maybe you need to stroke it like that. That 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 usually makes it work. Oh, here we go. Uh, here he's got the uh, octopus-like aliens that we've seen in the uh, like in Super Demon Attack. Sort of reminds me of it. Would you like to do an encore? Play okay. Again. Play again. Take out the flash ROM. Okay, it's blinking. Hmm. Maybe just a quick press. That should be a console reset. Yeah, that resets a console. Well, we can find out here. I'll power it off for safety. Didn't I have another card here? Yeah. Although that was the first thing I did when I got my final ground is I backed up the uh, card that came with it on a PC. Here, you want to plug that in? It seems to be giving me some difficulty. Sure. Okay. It's really sticky. That port is really sticky. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Let's, hear, let's try yours on mine. Yeah, these cases all seem to be printed by different people. Okay, so this is yours. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, because here's my final ROM, which has, or my flash ROM, uh -huh. which has that raised Texas Instruments, my final ROM. That have that. Okay, the red light's blinking. Hit the reset button, and it stops blinking. Or it'll blink once or twice. So it's the port, probably, the SD port in this uh, flash from this final ROM here, probably. Mm -hmm. I'll take it apart when I get home and mess with it. Okay. Here's a demo called the bitmap scroll. So, oh, it looks like, so it looks like a video game. Yeah, a bunch of flowers. Oh, quite mm -hmm. nice. See, it takes it right back. demo. Oh, for old friend, the uh, Don't Mess With Texas. for about 10 minutes, so if you want to start going through those floppies I brought. Sure. Are these just a full, full sets here? Multiples in each divider. Multiple. You might find three to five discs in each divider, plus some blank floppies. Now, I thought Brett was going to show up. I just met him on TI-99ers. He had just gotten a P-Box. And he had said, uh, he'd like some physical floppies. Does he know anyone? I said, well, if you can drive to Evanston, I can give you a box out of the Chicago Library. Yeah. So I figured what you guys would probably do is take one from each box. Sure. And then each of you would have a box that, here's this box, that, you know, three separate boxes. Wow. So you have the Chicago Library, one through 170. Then you've got 170 through two, or two, like 250. Then you've got the named discs, which is like Funnel Web, DM1000, Fast Term, Rapid Copy. Uh, some of these discs, uh, I set these up a long time ago at David Connery's house when we were working on the library. Huh. And uh, so I recognized my writing on the disc dividers. And uh, yeah, he had suitcase sized boxes that these would fit in, not actual suitcases, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was it. So when I saw this guy, I said, great, you know, I would have to haul around sure. 10 of these. This is just the Chicago library. Yeah. On my card, I got the Altman library. I got the Boston Computer Group. I got, the, uh, I got well, Plato, although I can't run it, but that's over like a thousand discs on Plato. Somebody was, uh, I don't know if it was Eric Gray or somebody was writing some new Plato routines. Somebody was writing Plato online. So the Cypher's distribution has been around for a long time. It's been running on Cypher 1 for who knows how long. But there's a guy named Cherry Holmes. This is a demonstration, so it's running on the uh, The gun never fires and you don't see opponents, but it's a proof of concept of being able to a three-dimensional maze. Although, I get, I get the feeling that it's a two-dimensional maze. Going from the center of the transfer to the side. Oh, my eyes are going out. 
Fighter distribution, you know, Fighter host distribution to actually getting running on something as a manager. So yeah, he was trying to carry his two big packs and stuff. I thought he meant to design that stuff. I just know. Yeah. 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 Y
P.E. It doesn't do anybody any good if I hoard this stuff. Right. I don't need five copies of these libraries sitting on a shelf till the day I die. I seem to recall that you had an offer of, that you would deliver this anywhere in the world to anybody for $1 million. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I will deliver any one of these floppies to anywhere in the world for $1 million. But wait, there's more. Yes. You get the other 99 uh, for free. <coughs> you buy one at full price, you get the second at half price. Yeah. Another half a million. Yeah. What a deal. Mm -hmm. What a deal. Hey, my passport's valid. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> my biggest fear is, of course, that some... Some wealthy will person up. will actually take me up on this and say it's a binding contract. Well, because I said it over the internet. I'd like to remind you that uh, I speak the language, so I'll be more than happy to take a little time to go with you. Okay, yeah. Provided you pay all the expenses, or or yeah. the seller does, yes. we can. Uh, seller pays for shipping. Seller pays for shipping, <laughs> and uh, and and since we don't trust the uh, postal system, we want to go by uh, ship. Uh, where appropriate, uh, first class airliner where appropriate, uh, limousine where appropriate, and it's a door to door service. So, uh, yes, you know, just give us your That's address. This. I will hand deliver anywhere in the world, unless, of course, it's on the top of a mountain, in which case, uh, we'll take a helicopter. Mm -hmm. My mountain climbing days are behind me, mm -hmm. and I'm not going there anymore. So, what else have we got? Okay, well, this demo, uh, it's like 20 minutes long. It's running the second time. Oh, it is? Okay. okay. So we showed the, uh, I showed the F-18 update demo. I think you're out of the room, Owen. And, uh... You don't have a uh, leather, leather, leather goddess of Fobo on there. Fobo's on there, yeah? No, I don't. And that's all in text. Uh, it's funny you should mention that because I was going through some uh, disks. Uh, part of the chatter online was uh, someone was looking for a PDF file of how to write adventure games in text. And I didn't have the, uh, the PDF file, but I had the original book by Tim Hartnell called uh, How to Write Adventure Games for Your Home Computer. And uh, we were looking around, uh, several of us on Facebook were looking around, and sure enough, we found that at the Internet Archive, archive.org, they had the PDF file that he was looking for. Hmm. So, uh, let me just get my act together here. All right, uh, this was our demonstrations. And let's see now, paint and print. That was, did you use paint and print or did you use, uh, there's one uh, graphics program you liked a lot. Well, I used. Um, uh, joy paint. Joy paint, that was, yeah. It. yeah, I used joy paint. That was written by a couple guys in Michigan. Comfortite. Uh, but, well, I or think, distributed by him, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a guy from Howell, Michigan, as I recall. Uh, and I spoke to him at one of the fairs at Triton and suggested he get together with the guy from uh, that was doing the uh, the mouse. Uh, what was it, Mechatronics Mouse or whatever? I can't yes. remember all the details. But anyway. Um, can I demonstrate this? Yeah. Right away. Let me shut this down. Extract. My cartridge here, keep it straight. <clears throat> Go ahead, you know how to use the machine. Uh, speak up so the micro identify yourself, speak up so the microphone can hear you, and say who the author was and what the program is you're demonstrating. Uh, 
Um, have a seat. They can hear you. It, it can hear you from a good distance. Just. I am Buck Brand, and I will be demonstrating a game called Turmoil, recreated from the 2600 by Petey, made to the TI. So I will show you now. Turn up the sound up there now a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, there was something I was going to look out for the moment. Now, now watch this. First menu at the top. Get that bar off. All the way to the top menu. As I said, this game was originally on the 2600. And there's a game just like it on the private computer called Spaz Attack. Boy, that's like a super version of Root Beer Tap or Pizza. <laughs> you know, it's, it's often been compared to a vertical version of the game Tempest, an arcade game. Oh, yeah. The vertical format. Oh, Tempest was 360. Yes, it was. And how do you play this game? Um, simple. You use a controller and you and you destroy these guys. And you're shooting at somebody, or they're shooting at you, or? Um, no, I'm just shooting at them. I see. And if I touch them, I die. You you see the you see the the sh the, the thing with the holes in them? You can't shoot them. Also, if, if the arrows touch an edge, a, an enemy gets spawned, which you can only kill by by hitting it from behind. As I will demonstrate now. See see? You can only hit it from behind. See, as my shot hits it, you can't you can't kill it from in front. You have to kill it from behind. So yeah, basically that's turmoil. See if you can get fifteen thousand. Yeah, that's a good score. To, ah, jeez. Try it again. And this is a really cool screen right here, the loading up screen. Yeah, that's like all the stuff uh, that they came down with from the final round. They have stuff like that. So, as I said, th this was recreated by Petey. He's a really good guy. He's a good guy. I'm going to, sh I'm going to try and get 1,500. They must have been popular if they're that popular. Actually, part of the reason this was create recreated on the TI is because because there was a ch there was a, I uns I unsuspectedly um post poised a challenge to um to, to recreate it onto the to recreate turmoil onto the twenty onto the TI. So, what you're doing here is just kind of firing at, at random up and down, uh, yeah. and just hitting everything that's just, that's the way you do it, huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. This is nice. And if you stay in one lane too long, one of those indestructible ships will come. As I just demonstrated. Oh, geez, the tanks. Yeah, ever since I was a kid, I was all for weird sound effects. And every, and every time you complete a level, you get a, you get a, and you get another ship. How many ships do you get total? In the start? Four. So that's turmoil. That was cool. Electronic tonalities. Yeah. And there was never a CD or a record release of this. That's, that's my copy. Ah. That's on a cartridge? So, uh, Louis. Yeah. Can I see your cartridge? Is that a. Uh, it was sent to me by Ciro. Oh, okay. Now, uh, is this a new cartridge or is this an old? It was just created. Just created. Oh, okay. His key.
Oh, well, someone did a very nice job on that. Is that Cyril? Cyril uh, Marie? Cool. No kidding, huh? And uh, Louis did, that's called. I don't know if you Sure, of course. <laughs> you said please. Hard to get a good oh, shot of that Jeff? there. Jeff? Yes, sir. It's working. It says you want a security update. It's working. I can it's necessary. Necessary. Here, that's a good shot right there. Jeff, yeah. um, while right I was there. demonstrating so, turmoil, this turned six off. Six inches away. Got it. While I was demonstrating turmoil, this turned off. Yeah, timed out because you. That's okay. Okay. So can who's the next? Can back in, Dad? On the list. Uh, I don't have. I thought I had more Zork. Oh, I got the. I think I got the cartridge at home. Dad? You don't have the. Uh, you don't have the hacked version of um, Plato, huh? No, not the. Uh, I've got all the files. I don't have the. Uh, all right. I'll bring my uh, copy in next next it's month. In the belly button. I'll find it. Um, it's, uh... Can we try this one, quick? Maybe? Oh, okay. See how you like it? I'll show on screen what it is. Oh, okay. People out here, if we had multiple cameras, we could have one of those camera studio switches to show, like, the group. For some reason, that's not... What are you doing? There it goes. Okay, this is a, uh... This is a modified Genesis controller that just plugs right into the TI, no splitter. It's only, it's only uh, Joy One, so actually it works pretty well. Yeah, although going through the uh, software collection on the uh, TI user group, I found that about a quarter of the programs expect you to have joystick too. Yeah, that's interesting. I knew that too. Well, which one's the fire button? Uh, this one right there, A. I didn't know the walls were electrified too. Yeah. So you have to point in the direction when you when you hit fire. <laughs> Now, if you leave before you've destroyed all the robots, they call you a coward. Yeah. I remember this at the arcades. I went nuts with this game. And if you stay in a room too long, the happy oh, face comes Oh, evil Otto. Yeah. Evil Otto. Say Vic, but Vivi will do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I pulled up a near complete set out of there. Oh, okay. Some of them are only one copy of. Are the minor copy sets up here too? This is the whole set here. This is a set of the main desks. Oh, that's a set of the main desks. All right. So I guess maybe trying best to, to shoot them from the side. Oh yeah, and they shoot at you. Oh, they shoot at you the too. <laughs> oh, that's a heck of a mount. <coughs> How do you get a higher score that time? Than Life isn't fair. <coughs> yeah, I like the feeling on this. I'm using a direction pad. That's a complete set. Oh, <coughs> <coughs> Duncan, I keep running into it. Those things are lethal, even when yeah. they have exploded. I'm not used to diagonal uh, control being this sensitive. 
Now in the arcade, if you exited too soon, they would uh, block the exits off on you. Like that one right above me is blocked off. Let's try taking off again. Yeah, the one, uh, the exit right behind me is blocked off, so I can't just escape. You can't run into the fragments. Yeah, yeah. You seem to turn red. If you if you leave before you kill them all, they uh. Then they come back armed. Yeah, the uh, and they PO'd. <laughs> That's Borzork. Great. Yeah, so it's as nice opposed friendly. to Boring. Yeah. Finally getting this thing working again. Ugh. So where was I? This is a this is one through eighty four. If you want those two, I've got a full set full. So I think I've got a full set. Okay. Owen, I've got your final brown card, and you have mine. So here's the original final ground card, okay. and then yours has got my blue Castilla capture card in it. Oh wait, this one's yours. Yeah, that one's mine. Okay, yeah. So I think I'll use the at least one copy of the main discs, and here's some of two or more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Thanks. if you want to grab that box, then. yeah, that's good. I gotta go feed a meter real quick, guys. I got here a little earlier than y'all did. I have to feed one in about ten minutes. I'll go down and do it for you if you'd like. Two forty-five. Yeah, but all my money's in my car. <laughs> I can pay it on my card if you want. No worries. Only two bucks. Okay. All right. Seventeen. I'll pay you when you get back. No worries. No way you can stay and master this master of ceremonies. <laughs> Got a message from John. I don't know if he's watching or not. Oh. Uh, May it's safe to Cancun. Oh. Picture of a picture of John with his uh, with his shirt off, his wife in the background. Do have copy of this I don't think one? she's got her shirt off. Okay. I was waiting for that. The way you phrased that uh, statement. So this time. That's how we know if you're missing something. Right. You don't have the exactly right. Especially when you get into the name desks. Yeah, I need I need a book. No doubt. It's also handy too if it's like I need this program. Okay. These are final gram again. Yes, sometimes. Absolutely. Now this is how I had to rewrite. You remember how the first uh, SD card, how the menu was? Mm -hmm. This is all the same programs, but this is how I had to rewrite it to get it to get along with the uh, compact flash card. So we'll go through games. Here's what's the biggest thing that's different is games, rather than having many subdirectories, uh, alphabetical, all the games that are A, all the games that are B. I'll press letter E now for games A through M. And there we go. Look up at the top. We have seven pages of games. I think you can have seven or eight. But here I'll step through them. So here's games. Uh, you know, A through M. So it starts out with John Phillips' uh, 4A Flyer. Uh, here we got uh, Astro Fighter, Axel F. Uh, Hal, your favorite, Backstein. You always like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Beyond Parsec and Beyond Space are the same game. Uh, when it was first released, it was called Beyond Parsec, and uh, TI complained that they owned the name Parsec. Uh, so he renamed it to Beyond Space. Otherwise, it's the same game. Here's page two, Blackjack, Burger Time, Car Wars, Chasse, a Wampus. So I imagine that's Hunt the Wampus there. It's under R and S. Uh, here we're on the third page, Checkers, Chicken Coop, Chisholm Trail, Demon Attack, Dragonflyer was always fun. Uh, Doncaster Race Course, uh, that's an EA5 file. We uh, ran that last year. Driving Demon, 
Okay, remember we demoed all the ET programs, ET on land, ET the extraterrestrial. Uh, one of these is like Frogger, Flappy Bird, Galaxia, the Game of Life. Uh, yeah, it's the Conway's Life program where you get to set up all the dots and you watch them go. Ooh, Trail of the Gods. Frog. Yeah, Hangman, Henpeck, Henpeck, I think, and Hen House are the same game. It's just depending on the publisher, they had two different names. Uh, Hopper, the kangaroo game, that was always fun. Hunt the Wumpus, for real there. Uh, going down to Night Lore, uh, that's that uh, fun one where you change into a werewolf through the game. It's got that 3D isometric uh, yeah. you know, perspective scrolling. Lasso. The Legend of Tilda. Oh, that sounds exciting. Uh, Marvin's Great Escape, Micro Pinball 2, Micro Surgeon, to Moon Patrol, that's page 6. Here's page 7. Moon well, Sweeper, Mouse Attack, Mr. Chin, Ms. Pac Man, and Wampus, <laughs> Jagged. So what was that one? Is that something? Oh, yeah, Lobster Bay. We ran that a couple months ago. Jet Set Willy. This is reported to be the world's most difficult game to play. Uh, it's even worse than Minor 2049er because you have to be so precise in your jumps on where you land. Fathom, you get to play the uh, porpoise. So B. Yeah, it's nice. It also has all the uh, Disney software, the uh, Von Drake chemistry program, uh, the Pinocchio uh, grammar program. So your E.T.'s flying saucer came down. Who else also typed in uh, Simon Saucer from Home Computer Magazine? It was a nice variation of the Simon game where you had to repeat the colors that they show by like pressing the appropriate keys. And then after a real long time, uh, the saucer would magically change colors and play a refrain. Then you would get another round. We can't land here. There are three landing places. Make them safe by getting the animals to their food and homes. Press enter to go on. Actually, I've never played this one before. Let's pick a landing place in the forest. Take the animals home, feed the animals, and clear, clear the forest. Clear the forest? Yeah, clear cut. Just kill the animals. Use napalm. Help E.T. spaceship land. Use joysticks or arrow keys to take the forest animals to their homes. Yeah, I've never seen this one before. Already it looks much better than the original. Here's an idea. I'd like to write a game where you go fishing, but you use dynamite, you know, and the fish float on the I surface. I would be surprised if someone else hasn't written such a thing. It's the forest. Let's look at the jungle. Go, go out the forest to hunt with a 50 caliber machine gun. <laughs> Fly over, you know. <coughs> Just shooting out of the plane. Trip. Go back <laughs> later and haul in whatever's down there. Let's take the animals home. Help you keep spaceship land. What they call what they call that um, modified DC three? They had the uh, guns in it. You fire a million rounds in a mile. Put a round in every square foot of the ground. When Puff you the magic dragon. That was it. Yeah, Puff the magic dragon. Yeah. Yeah, because they used the DC three because they had that big cargo door. Yeah. And uh, they always uh, flew around clockwise because <sighs> they only had the door and the gun on the uh, right side. Yeah. And uh, that's that's a good way to hunt. You just go in with a uh, with a tractor, since all the trees.
trees would probably be shot okay. down anyway. All right, we took the frog all home. Off the, all off the road. Now we're going to take the owl home. So is the owl going to live in the uh, cave, a cactus, or a tree? <laughs> the owl's going to live Bless in the uh, tree, of course. So yeah, this one you get the feet, uh, get the animals to their homes. You can't seem to go off the playing field, and you know say, why, oh, why you would just, you want to? I mean, if you accidentally overshoot, I'm just holding the button down, and when they hit the edge of the uh, path, okay, the owl's home. Hmm. See, the owl lives home. in the lives in the roots of the trees, huh? But not in the palm trees. I wonder if this is... Oh, another owl. Okay. Just put this one under the cactus and see what it does. All right. Yeah, see, I ran up, and it doesn't give you an error. You don't go off. I'm used to, like, uh, playing MASH, where uh, it's that glorified version of the... Uh, right, where only the business end of the tool is actually... In the patient's body. Yeah. And actually in MASH you can sort of cheat because you can enter the patient's body anywhere. Yeah. Right. You don't have to follow that pathway in. You just move it right over the skin and everything, but once you touch the shrapnel, yeah. Yeah. you have to follow that zigzag operation path. Okay, it didn't uh, crash or nothing. Try and try that one on the right hand side. Oh, okay. You already, you already put one all up in that tree. Is that a beehive or something? It looks like I a, think it's a cave. Cave? Yeah, they showed yeah. like an earthen cave. Well, that could be a cave all then. They're creating biodiversity. You know, yeah, you know a cave. You know how a, a tree owl goes. Whoo. Well, a cave owl goes. Boo hoo. Boo. Everything lives in. Ah. Now they give us a third type of cave. That must be yeah. That must be where yeah. the owl lives. And the parrot. The parrot does not live in a cactus, so the parrot must live in that tree over there. What is the other one? What animals sound like? What does the dog with the hair lips sound like? Narf, narf. Narf, narf. <laughs> okay. Well, that was E.T. on land. And let's go through, uh, this is the, again, this is the uh, SD card I had to edit uh, for my final ground to work with my obnoxious uh, uh, compact flash device that uh, was 10 years old. What is that, PR uh, editor? Is that, uh, is that? PR editor. PR editor. Is that? Uh, PR, PR, what does PR editor stand for? PR, PR. Well, it's PR base, so maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know. Personal records. Is that it? Personal records, okay. okay. Yeah, I don't have any files to use with this, but it goes to 80 count. Uh, guys, we got more di uh, boxes here. Or did you go through them? Haven't gone through them all just yet. Okay. So it happens when you jump the gun and don't let it reset. You've got to wait for the blinking light to go out. Uh, games end to Z. Nature's Way, Neverland. Yeah, Nature's Way is another thing that wouldn't run uh, with the uh, F-18 uh, version 1 software. Who wrote Neverlander? Um, that's it, yeah. I haven't seen I haven't seen some of these guys. At the That's one of my favorite games right there. I love playing that game. Neverlander. Yeah. Uh, I I like the one where you eliminate the um, the uh, colors, and so I only put one color in there. Clickety. Yeah, clickety, and, and I shoot it, and boom, you know, I win every time. Clickety. Clickety and zero zap, my two favorites. Zero zap, huh? Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, fire your rocket to get up to the top of the screen. It's my alarm telling me it's time to feed a meter. Oh, I thought that was part of the program. So you've got to travel a certain distance. You're actually descending. You've got to travel a certain distance without running out of fuel, without hitting too many asteroids, because every time you hit an asteroid, you run out of fuel. They just refilled our fuel tank. <coughs> yeah, the, the fuel stays at the exact same level unless you hit an asteroid or unless you engage your craft. That's real nice to get at the top of the screen, because that gives you more time to react, but it uses a lot of fuel. And you just sink right back down. the uh, fuel canister there and I'm not getting much of a bonus but you need a taller screen so you can uh, well, now the asteroids are going sideways that's how this game usually ends for me <laughs> I never get that far. We had that on the high score competition for Atari Age a couple years ago. Oh, yeah. Hey, Vic, it only looks like there's one set of this in this box. Is that correct? Or is there another set over here? No, that's the only box of those that I found. Huh. So, yeah, so get, Dave Connery only so got so good. far through yeah. it. You know the story of Dave Connery, don't you? Vaguely. Oh. He uh, died of a heart attack. And when they went into uh, uh, Ernie Program went in uh, with the police or whatever uh, into his house, and the place was such a pigsty that they condemned the place and put it down. And uh, I got this. His son, his son was in jail, a uh, real nice kid. Um, his son was in jail for murder. And uh, so he wanted to get the kid some money because he had a life sentence. And uh, uh, the thing was kind of sad. Dave put him in jail in the first place uh, when he was, I think, 14 or 15 years old. He and another kid broke into the house to steal a can of beer or something. So uh, Dave found out and called the police and turned him in and they put the kid in JV and, uh, uh, and that started him off. Now, he was a nice kid, but Dave was, how can I say this in public? Yeah. Hey, when we went to uh, the meetings in, uh, <coughs> in Milwaukee for the Milwaukee group, um, nobody would sit with him at the table because he insisted on smoking at the table, and he also, um, he would send his food back every single time, uh, and he never left a tip. And as a result, uh, everybody would rush in there, they would, they would tell him they were going to one restaurant, and everybody, everybody oh, was a different restaurant. I hated having to do that. Yeah, and, and then having, and then we would, we would, uh, get into the place as fast as possible and get there were 12 12 places at the table and there were 12 of us we were okay if there were 11 of us then we knew we were in trouble because he'd find us he'd, he'd track us down we, uh, he, he, he cottoned on pretty quickly that we weren't doing what we said we were uh, and it wasn't it wasn't the guys from the Chicago group that were doing it it was the guys from the Milwaukee group generally were, were uh, I say just follow us, you know, because we didn't know what whole restaurant we were going to, and they would give him directions to a restaurant, and then we'd go in the opposite direction, and uh, we'd be following them, and he'd follow us. And, and, uh, 
Uh, that was kind of sad, but he brought it on himself. I, I went to Lima with him once, and uh, he did exactly the same thing. Really? He, he turned his food back at every single place we stopped, complained about everything all the time, called everybody out to waitresses. He called them in, he, he'd swear at waitresses. <clears throat> And um, and then, and they refused to pay for food. He had the food and then refused to pay for it. Uh, he claimed that it was um, something was wrong with it. Or, and every place we went, and uh, I mean, people, people just wouldn't put up with it. Yeah. You know? I mean, after a while, yeah. just nobody wanted to be around him. Yeah. yeah. This demos the uh, high resolution version for the F-18 of the uh, Return to Monkey's Island by what was it, Lucas Arts? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Revenge, Monkey Island. I think it's going to be played here. That's an actual game, or is that just a demo? It's a demo it's a of a game mm -hmm. for a different platform. Uh, yeah. Right. Just kind but, uh, of demoing that. Notice how the colors didn't reset. If they could display. Yeah. Now, that was the F-18 demo. Yeah, you should change that to your default console color, so it's kind of exotic. I, I'd love to have some brown. A couple brown. months, somebody had a failure of their uh, a video chip or something uh -huh. in their console, and they were getting like an orange background <coughs> and all sorts of stuff, and uh -huh. I wanted to take a screenshot of that and uh, use that as the... Uh, of the uh... So that was a demo of F-18. Now let's go to a demo on the TI, and... Here's the same thing, the monkey demo, but this is in a regular TI colors. Now let's see if it resets correctly. So here's the TI graphics, which is a CGA, and the other was at least a VGA demo. I don't think the colors reset on No, I don't think they reset. I got to turn the console off. There we go. Wait for the uh, final ground to reset. Demo TI, monkey demo. Yeah, some of these, like the uh, many colors demo or something like that, I noticed that the colors get reset to something. Okay, and this would be the CGA version. Yeah, I need to have two computers set up so I could run them both at the same time. Actually, I got another one of these monitors that doesn't have speakers on it. I bought it for 10 bucks up in Lake in the Hills, and then a week later, this guy had this one for sale for 10 bucks in Crystal Lake. So I drove two miles further and got the one I actually wanted, because now I don't have to fiddle around with external speakers. In this version, it's hard to see what some of the figures are that you can see in the other one. Right yeah, now. yeah. This would be the standard C, uh, TI video resolution. I want to get the uh, D-Box set up if you want to learn on your uh, 4 Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is standard TI graphics. I'm just excited to see if the, if the disk drives work with it. Because I've, <clears throat> I have yet in my entire time working with the TI ever had a working set of dual five and a quarter floppies in bay. Never been able to have one. <clears throat> okay, the main console at home, I've got one five and a quarter half height in there, so I've got the old gap. Mm. Oh. Oh. We're experiencing technical errors. Stand by. Okay, we'll go to RXB, and I had a.
Okay, rich extended basic may be giving it a hard time. Let's just go with TI or extended basic. Disk drive one is working, disk drive two is lighting up. I'm going to turn that so you can see it. Drive one lights up, drive two lights up. Maybe it's looking for the it's looking for the disk manager disk, which we don't have. Okay. No, okay, it's looking for a program called Load, which you might very well find on this disk. Okay. Okay, so that's what I was looking for. Okay, let's put REA back in there. Oh, here I've got the. Uh, oh, that's not how you spell it. Anymore. I spelled the R in, in Spanish. Okay, it doesn't like two guys trying to do the same thing. Interesting. Okay, the TI extended basic. Of course, I didn't bring my disk manager cartridge. Uh, can you flip the uh, RAM disk on? Sure. There's a little tiny s switch there. You just gotcha. move it up. On. No need to reset the, or turn the V-Box off or anything. Yeah. All right, it's on. There we go. Okay, RAM disk works. <coughs> okay, Mike got this disk in here upside down. Hmm. So it. Hmm. Does it take them upside down? Is that the might be processing right now. Error. I owe error. Good news. Let's look at this two. Is it light up? Yeah, yeah. You should have this thing turned to face you. Mm -hmm. So you can see it. No disk at. Okay. Well, it finds the RAM disk. Uh, gosh, I wonder if I got it. It's a TI. Controller, right? Uh, core comp. Core comp. I mean the uh, disk drive controller. Yeah, that's a core comp 9900. That's, okay. that's why it has a different menu here. All right. The uh, I was just wondering what address it was set at. Uh, so let's okay. Let's go down to config on the RAM disk. Okay. Drive controls at 1100. And the RAM disk. Is it 1200 and your are asked to Okay, so we don't have a conflict here of two cards at the same address. Your drive control is at uh, 1100, which is where it's supposed to be. Uh, I had a MyArc HFDC and I could set that at 1000. Mm -hmm. And by doing that trick, uh, the computer would look for a file called load on. HFDC DSK1 first before I would look at the physical floppy. So I was able to play <coughs> like how Set Leather Goddess of Phobos and Zork and stuff like that. Function equal. Okay, the left one, one does light up. It's not reading any of these disks though. No. Uh, the drive light is lighting up. Let's try the. That's why I love my RAM disk. It completely changes yeah. the way you use your TI. The lights lit up. It flickers a bit. So there's no disk on. 
we've tried three different ones, so it's obviously not a disc problem. Mm -hmm. Light lights up. <coughs> it flickers a bit. You will really should certainly go for the drive drive termination problem. But they're all set for correct ideas. Yeah, these, yeah, these, these came out of the this can these came out of the, these are these were set up in a pretty they preset up P box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All I did was pull them out and Sorry. stick them in this one. So you think it's the core compass control? We, we, maybe. <clears throat> well, I, mean, I don't know. We can try a different set of cables if we want to. Your battery. Well, well the light fit the is the so light that it fits the fixes core comp stuff out in, um, I want to say California. Um, okay. Haven't seen that in yeah. a long time, but. Uh, it was only the one guy who would do core count. Even Richard Bell, I don't think, does core count. Maybe he does. <coughs> yeah, it read uh, drive A here just fine. That's a RAM disk at a, you know. Okay, and since I turned it on, it will run. Uh, disk U. Sorry. And your and your disk manager that that runs off your RAM disk doesn't read those disks in that drive. No. So. <laughs> yeah, I could try telling. Uh, give us a blank disk. Let's try to format it. Sure. Although, if you've got a machine that only formats your disks. Yeah, then, the and it are, doesn't read anybody else's. Well, the issue is, is if the drives are between, you know, big sets of disks that you wrote these disks out with, and those physical disk drives are mm -hmm. slight enough out of alignment in a different way. Yeah. Disk error, no yeah. disk got in drive. If the heads, if the heads don't uh, line up properly, um, you're screwed. <laughs> well, you're not screwed. You can realign, but well, the yeah, is, you know what you're. The problem is, is A, finding a proper calibration disk in this day and age. Yeah. You know, the other part of the problem is, is, over time, people will attempt to realign their own stuff without the correct hardware and correct calibration disks, yeah. and they'll realign it to a disk that they have, not necessarily a factory ah. formatted disk. Now, I just put this one in, notched down, and here's your hole for reading it. Okay. That's what it's looking for. Right. I mean, okay, so this one's a notch down. Yes. <coughs> How'd you get a blue flashlight? Or is that just... just the the white LEDs light. tinge a little bit into the violet more uh, This is uh, from Farm and Fleet. It's one of those with the uh, oh, yeah. variable focus. Yeah, it looks... Oh, I see. If, it, if you slide it and it there. becomes... Yeah. Ah, uh, bluer. You slide the foreskin in. Yeah. Okay, disc air. It just it's a family out. show. I'm the guy that usually does all the dirty lines. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't even figure out how to turn the key. There's a button at the back of the barrel that faces uh, you. You can turn it on and off twice. The third time you do it, it goes to strobe mode. No, and that's it. That. <coughs> and I got another one for 20 bucks. It's twice as bright as that. I love technology. You know, it's like every year I get another LED flashlight that's twice as bright as the one I had before. I tolerate technology. I don't like it. I don't even. I don't love it, but I tolerate it because. Okay, so sometimes a strained initialize won't work, but you have to fool the machine and do a number seven a box format. Going single density because I don't know if these are double or single density. Verify, yeah. No, it just errored out immediately. <coughs> Bad disk. It's maybe magnetized, but I mean, you said you were using those. Okay, now that's promising. The it disk was... manager touched it enough to get that free. Look how many sectors are free. So it's got garbage on the first, was that sector one, sector two? 
FDR. Sector zero. Well, sector zero is the one with the name on it, right? Name. Can you sweep it? Yeah. Or, the sweeping the disk usually is a quick way of removing all the files off the disk by just deleting the table of contents. Yeah. Well, if you do that, then shouldn't you be able to reinitialize it then? If you want the that's, FDR? Yeah, it's only the table of contents, a sweep deletes. Right, if it's not reading. Where a format reading, goes through sector zero, zero which is like the cover uh, of the book, and you open it up and you've got a table of contents. Right. We deleted the table of contents, not the cover that says the name of the book and the author and so, all that shit. We'll try initializing it again. <laughs> I have a shelf that is lined up from left to right with about 20 five and quarter inch floppy drives and none of them work. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out why, whether okay. it's jumper so settings or magnet. So okay. well, there's, there's another failure mode of these generations of drives, yeah. and that is there are small, low form factor capacitors on the underside of the uh, disk hub for the direct drive models of these. I don't mm -hmm. know about the um, the belt drive models, but uh, the direct drive models. No gouges. So, you know, the spindle motor is has a um, has a large cover on yeah. it. If you take the cover off, underneath it, there are usually a number of low-profile removal capacitors, and they tend to leak over time, and then they don't work. Out. Hmm. Sounds like a great project for your. Uh, well, we already have that on the list because you've got a couple. Um, drives that use those, like um, some of the aftermarket Commodore drives use those, uh, uh, Teak Max, and I think they were popular in the TRS-80 color computer world as well. I think that's where my friend Eric got a bunch of those drives from. He, he's ordered some. Speaking of your friend Eric, he's the guy that took apart my, um, well, no, uh, the think tank, right? right. What happened to that? Uh, so I have the disk drive. Yeah, I haven't been right. able to read it. Uh -oh. um, I'm not sure if it's a failure mode or if it's the fact that I'm using it on a USB to IPE converter and everything kind of fits tighter than it should be. So one of these days I have to actually hang it off a real controller on real cables oh, and okay. see if I can read it. But it doesn't sound like it's spinning up. I still have it. It's still in my possession. I know where it is. Okay, there's just, I, I can't think of even what's on there anymore, except maybe some of the kids program, uh, sure. uh, some of the papers and stuff they wrote in high school. And um, not that I think that that is, that is any right great loss to them what? or if that they even remembered. I <coughs> just I can't remember what was on it because Richard, it was the hard family computer for the longest time. Well, no, so it's probably a rich extended there. base. And, um, the blue screen ones? No. I don't know if there's any naughty pictures on there. I don't think so, because I never put any on. But if you find, them, if you find any, let me know. This so blue screen well, is my RAM one disk. Of the kids RAM was so I can do at A. Here, I can do some things, other so. tricks and go to B. Um, now we're in boot, which looks. That's what I was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, boot is a comprehensive version of menu. Menu is like a crippled version of boot yeah, okay. that was given away free with the RAM disk, so you could use it. Boot, you can actually do more. So one. That's the program I'm missing right now. I'm gonna put that on my on my 384k RAM disk. Well, unfortunately, it seems like we can't really use your. P box. You can pull the, pull the uh, controller out. Then you can just use your RAM disk. Yeah, uh, you know what I did not do? Was, was fighting with RXB is we've got eight versions of extended basic on this final ground. There we go. Okay, so final Grom shows up on a core comp. As 
like it though. <coughs> he doesn't like it. No, it's something, something that's trying to do duplicate what it's doing. Okay. There is a, <clears throat> I believe there's an EEPROM that you can put on that core comp board that mm -hmm. will get rid of that trying to access the disk manager as soon as it comes up. Yeah, that's the final ROM. Let's try the uh, flash ROM 99. There. Found that. See if it'll load. And that seems similar. Let's try loading something anyway, even though the screen's bizarre. That loaded Super Demon Attack. I found a fellow game called Red Baron. Yeah, I remember that from the... No, this is a uh, disc program that... Uh, Well, this one was real simple because you had two cartoony looking airplanes flying in opposite directions. Okay, well this works fine. So to a certain extent, the flash ROM works. You might, want, you might want to try the other one, uh, even though it had a messed up screen, and mm -hmm. see if something and, that, and of course, that, that might be. It really not, got upset. Might not be a feature. Might not be a bug. Might be a feature. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Final ground. All right. The light's blinking. I'll press the red reset button on the final ground. The light flashes dramatically and then stops. Okay. Yeah. Reset the console. Final ground 99 shows up. And we get this. Huh. Try. It's yeah. It's it's buzzing, so that usually is a bad sign. Oh, but it goes to something else. Let's see if it'll load one of those programs. Well, they actually successfully so loaded. Maybe it was just the that does start up there. Yeah. That's really that's really interesting. There you go. So it just, it's, it's like a little, it's like a little yeah. kid who won't eat his peas and screams and screams and eats the damn peas and then. Uh, oh, we don't have a speech synthesizer set up. Fall off the end of that screen. Still getting. So I like the tri viewer. We got a screen facing towards you. Yeah, because with the speech module set up, he says, uh, "I'll get you a bit, but." very dangerous because uh, if you're uh, hanging on a rope on the side of a cliff, that, that boulder will get you every time. Mm -hmm. You walk right into that one. I hate games like that. Yeah, I yeah. really do. What's interesting in this game is there's a hawk nest here. And every once in a while, you'll see a hawk take off, fly behind the mountain, and then he'll come back on the right side of the screen. He's flown behind you, and he'll land back on the nest. On level two, he'll take off, fly behind the mountain, then he flies back in front of this mountain, and he always goes for your rope between you and the cliff you're hanging from. And he'll cut that rope and grab it with you hanging on to it, and you go flying off the side of the screen going, hell. And uh, <laughs> it's just funny as hell. Oh, also, when the hawk shows up on the screen, he goes, hawk, hawk. <laughs> and it, it's, uh, I'm not going to take a lot of time trying to show you that. That's something I should actually record. And so I can condense about 15 minutes of gameplay down to about 12 seconds. And say, well, here's this and here's that. <laughs> but... The whole idea was to try this. Okay, press the reset button on the final ground. Reset the console, we got final ground again. 
Uh, I was looking for uh, homebrew MDX. You can think of that tone as just sort of a prompt to press another yeah. key. Uh, I'm looking for a uh, editor assembler here. Hello. Awesome, thank you so much. So I love you too. So demo, demo, <coughs> development. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, here's the uh, editor assembler on the final ground. Uh, tractor uh, loader catalog. Okay, it won't let me do a letter drive. Uh, do you have a well, here? Let me just throw a floppy in here. Notch down. Label left. Maybe. Watch the general whether it's notch down, label left, or notch up, label right. Okay, the disk drive light is lit up. The controller light is lit up. And we have an error. Okay. So it's just nothing is happy with this. That's so crazy. You sure it's not, you sure it's notched down? Yeah, because we were not able to even start to initialize a disk with the notch up. It would just say... <clears throat> no disk and with the notch down it said oh disk error so that was actually an improvement uh, yeah maybe I better check and see if uh, uh, see if anybody is following us if they are that's why we couldn't get the other room even though it was empty but somebody had it at two o'clock, and so that wasn't going to give us enough time. That uh, that little librarian who let us in, uh, older lady, very nice, very sweet lady, uh, looks after us. Uh, and uh, some of the other ones are a little bit brusque, but she's I'm always sweet. Trust a million ugly faces on the screen. Please, before we leave this library, remind me to turn in my hotspot. Okay, extended basic plus. Oh, I was looking for a disk and drive one. Let's try manually loading that. Oop, caps. Which isn't a surprise. It might take a... Uh... <clears throat> okay. Although function equals works fine here. Okay, turn the console off. to uh, jazz up my RAM disk. Mm -hmm. It's called Spree. I mean, it's called a list. It's a list. Er, uh, no, I uh, understand I've got a uh, RAM disk in there. It's got its own operating system, and it was getting along just fine there. Of course, I can't run my floppies with this drive. Try to reboot the P box? Yeah, I could try doing that. Can you turn the card on and off? Or start with the yeah, off I think that turning it on and off is, only makes it discoverable to the P box. Mm. It doesn't really turn the card off as such. Oh, I it just think. makes the connection. Just takes it off the box. Yeah. Gotcha. 
Okay. Uh, the RAM disk is on now? Um, yep. Okay, I'm getting an error. Okay, so I really can't call any, it's uh, lost its communications. Mm. The part of the uh, RAM disk uh, it's called it's ROS, it's mm -hmm. RAM disk operating system, it's gotten corrupted, which is not uncommon if you're screwing around with it a lot, like we are here. And uh, usually you just put a floppy in, put your editor assembler in, and you load the program called config, and sometimes you have to uh, say uh, uh, disk one config, and then when you press enter, then turn the RAM disk on, so it's already reading off the floppy rather than trying to go through the RAM disk, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I'll have to wait till I get on another system to get the RAM disk back online. Okay. Okay, we've gone as far as we can with that. Darn. Now, do these need, yeah, let me try these again. Uh, some of these. Uh, Neither one of those needs 32K, those are both. Oh, okay, you know that. Yeah. Because I started labeling my cartridges 32K if they needed it. Yeah, both of these here, they uh, they run off on standard uh, turmoil and bores are, are both, uh, they run on 16K or 8K um, standard green mm -hmm. Gidry boards. Yeah, because I had the uh, Eric and Monster Land, and I had the. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Do you want the CF7 over here? Uh, no, I wanted to uh, just go through it and try the different ones with the. Uh, oh, okay. Buck Rogers. No, nothing here looks like uh, demo, demon attack, Dib Dug, Fathom, Game of Life. Grail of the Gods down there will take 32K. It will? Yes. So we'll select that. Okay, some of these will actually uh, give you a title screen that says needs 32K. Huh. Uh, I forget what one it was that. The uh... Grail of the Gods is a uh, roguelike that uh, requires 32K. So mm -hmm. it was uh, compiled with uh, Wilhelm's compiler. Yeah, I wanted to make another uh, folder uh, for this. Uh, label 32K. Mm -hmm. God, what am I thinking of? I did. Didn't I? So we'll select the final gram. Uh, no, this doesn't have it. H. Ah, here. This has this option 32K. So, yeah, 32K expansion RAM burn in, expansion RAM test, 4A DOS. These are all things that need 32K to run. Mm. Axel F was a uh, EA5 program. I seem to remember it was pretty good, pretty big. Uh, database management. Uh, entry, report, setup, sort, disk fixer. Oh, Millographic Explorer. Fast term. GIF Mania was fun. I remember when that came out. Mm -hmm. Who was it that wrote that? Group Uh. He was just so happy with that. And it was so so much fun seeing even the. Uh, yeah, try it. Uh, try it and see if there's a. Um Name on there. Well, that is. Yeah, we don't have 32K set up right now. Oh, so. oh, oh. I thought it. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's plug in the uh, uh, speech module again. What's our time? 
Uh, it's about, we've got about 20 minutes or so. Okay. But there's nobody following us, so we don't have to worry about breaking down too early. Yeah, yeah that's a good way of doing it. I should just like uh, take a big blob of cell phone and glue that to the side of the speech module. Hmm. Or people's refusal to make a case for the thing. There are some 3D printed cases out there for them, but uh, not not that particular style, that L style. Mm -hmm. And nobody nobody has them, so they don't make a case for them. But yeah, the small nano pads, there's cases for those. Well, that's why God invented the 3D printer, isn't it? Yeah, that's how they mostly make it. I need a 3D printer to make something about half the size of this table. <laughs> Was, were we on homebrewer tools? Home, well, we were in the homebrew 32K. 30, yeah, 32K, okay. Well, you know, they do have these huge, huge. Um, yeah, I don't need printers. one that'll print a house out of concrete. I've seen those. Those are wild. You know, the, what, 48 hours they've made a house. Yeah, that's you know, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just got to keep filling the hopper with concrete wow. and cement trucks. They've got, uh, they've now got a 3D printer. Uh, they make a matrix uh, for whatever organ you need, and then they populate it with um, stem cells or some kind of cells, and it grows a new heart. But it, and then they have to electrically stimulate it to get the thing pumping. That's yeah, great. But, but it's 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 still a yeah. Piece of hamburger. Yeah, but then they they haven't yet put it into anybody, I guess. Um, maybe they have and nobody knows about it. Maybe they're doing it in the Philippines or some damn place where, you know, they can do all that kind of research and, and the yeah, government cares. doesn't doesn't care. Yeah. So it's paying, care. Well, That's come it, on, now. you know they cloned Elvis twenty years ago and he was working at that grocery store in Florida. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what I think. The, the the true story apparently is that uh, when uh, Prince Charles and uh, Diana were about to be married, they had to proved that she was capable of having an heir to the throne. Um, and so they had some of her, um, uh, whatever the eggs, I guess they were, and they had some of uh, uh, Charles's uh, sperm, and uh, somebody uh, was supposed to destroy it, but didn't, and uh, created a daughter, I guess, uh, or had a surrogate father or some damn thing, and she's supposed to be living in Minnesota, uh, but he has refused right. to recognize her and uh, even meet with her. Okay, Jeff picks on my compact flash card to 317, 318, and 319. I want to see this. Yeah. That would create a constitutional uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, concerning there, problem, right? yeah. Uh, it's like the prisoner of Zenda, you know, with the, 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 yep. the uh, exact duplicates. Uh, who's the who's the heir and who's the imposter, the pretender, I guess. What do you think on these, Jim? So which ones are those? Have you gone through these yet? Is that the, re the reorganized stuff? This is um, the X. So it's more uh, than the discs. I haven't even gone through any of these. And then there's... And that's the reorg. Yeah. We were on tools. Did you, you guys need a UK. bag to carry some of the stuff in? Yeah, we were at. I need a dump truck. <laughs> Just mania B. Okay. Got it. Got it. Those are things bag. Okay. If you don't mind, you know, uh, we should be able to do a number four so disc catalog. Disc, uh, disc one on the compact flash card. And here's the GIFs that are loaded there. Now, GIF mania is such a big program, it can do a catalog but it doesn't have enough memory left for it to, for you to select a file and for it to load that file. So you got like, remember the names. Okay, press any key. Try one like Jolly or something that you can spell. That's the first one. Yeah. It seems like those are songs. Rudolph, Carol. Music called. Yeah, you're right. These are songs. Yeah. Carol Jones, Jeanette Jingle, Kings. Yeah, yeah. Music. That's not a GIF. Okay. I'll so put I think this. I pulled a partial but nearly complete set of these okay, from good. another box, but there's probably someone missing. Yeah. Have to get your um, 
your physical listings, if you've got a digital copy of that somewhere, or if you have, you may have actually given it to me at some point. I'll look through my email archive um, and then target, identify the ones that I'm missing. Yeah. Uh, is it? Okay, I mean, if you want to take this, or if you want to pick well, I mean, if, if you're if you're completing a set, I would say take it's that. Nice because it remembers okay. it. And then whatever you don't need, I'll take it. Back to another meeting. This sure. one. Okay. So whatever, whatever That's 318. It seems to be the I'll, same I'll thing. Okay. Yeah. This is supposed to be GIFs. Okay. Uh, let me do a disk catalog again. It says it's uh, Tiger Cub disk 689. What does 689 come up with in that book? This book here? Yeah. It should be the uh, compact flash name. This is the uh, Chris Bobbitt Asgard. Asgard. PC name. Does it say 689? Mm hmm. This is the volume. This is all Asgard here. section of maybe it was in here. Ah, here it is. I was looking at the TI Artist mm -hmm. stuff that was in there. So you've got copies of that TI Artist stuff in that box. Um, yeah, six eighty nine is Christmas that. music. So six ninety. The ones in the other one. It's probably cool, but I think there's four or five close to the back. See, I heard it's the instances. I think it's right around this section here somewhere. Yeah, I can already see there are a couple things in here that were not in the other box. There you go. Tiger Cup 830. The heck? How'd you do that? Yeah. Unless you put in the wrong, unless you put in your number. Yeah, 830 of, is yeah, physics. Because we've actually done that before. There's a way around this. Yeah. That's it right there. That's what I'm most interested in. If you don't have copies of those. Oh, I would say if you're interested in it, take them. And then if you make a digital yeah. copy at some point. I will. I'll be making this. Uh, okay, good. So fix two, fix three. <clears throat> this is good. I will. Um, okay, there's my utilities desk. You can do volume utilities. We can do catalog. What did I say it was? One was uh, 6.30? Uh, 8.30. Or 8.30. We can actually catalog volume 8.30 as Tiger Cup. One, one, two, three. Boy, this is coming up different every time. Okay. Yeah. So 8.30, I wanted uh, Compact Flash 6.17. 6. Something, you know. Right here. 617. Oh, yeah, here's the uh, TI Sing Some Enchanted Evening. Yeah, oh, I, I see where I'm getting confused because Tiger Cub 630 is on the Compact Flash Volume Index as number 617. So, what was it we were looking for? Was the. GIF. 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 Don't be too dismayed if some of those discs do not work. The originals sometimes, some of the programs didn't work. Uh, and they just put everything on the disc and there, well, Bob Demeter, who was the uh, librarian at the time, okay, here's Jeff Picks. had a lot of work uh, to do when he when he quit. He, he knew that there were problems on some of the discs, sure. and then he turned it over to somebody else. I think it was uh, Tony Z for a while, and then he turned it over to Dave. So they're between, and they were using different machines to copy the discs. Right. And some of the programs were just broken in the first place. Uh, so 
Um, okay. It was, um, anyway, don't be too surprised. Yeah, I'm not Hey, uh, this may be the only existing copy for so Mermaid. You can find the original <clears throat> Fish Tank 1.0. Moving soon. Three point was out there. Five point was out there. One point. Oh, it says GIFs up on top. Mm -hmm. Try Boob and Sud and I'll try the first one. Yeah, that let's do that. Boob and Sud? Boob and Sud? This know. might be R rated. Okay, so this is what disc uh, 318, I believe. Let me go. Yeah, 318. Okay. So we had to go, what, H to Tools, B to 32K, second page, B B for GIF Mania. You got to step your way through a few, uh, Ford Disc Catalog, Disc 1. There it is. Boob and Sud. Okay. Don't want to try something easy like I? <laughs> Whatever you want to try. Well, I think we can go with this one. Okay, and on Gif Mania, you had some different color selects on where the program has its default palette it will go through. So sometimes you got to load the same picture several times to get the best uh, image, like Lion High. Yeah. I think the default that comes out with the green lion, but you set for a different default, like a D, uh, and it comes out the correct brown tone. So we'll just go for I for this. Uh, black line mode, yeah, we'll go for that. Condense. Yeah, because the picture is only what 420 by uh, 320 or something like that, and if you've got a large picture, it'll condense it down. Otherwise, it'll just show you the upper left-hand corner and left shift none, left shift none. Uh, so if you do a uh, uh, start it out and so promising. Yeah, um. I know there was one called uh, I there. Uh, if you do not condense it, then it goes, how far do you want to shift it left and how far do you want to shift it up? Uh, it's a bad disc, I would have to say. This is that collection of Tiger Cub I downloaded and not the actual physical floppies. So we have all the information. Okay, this is a normal load actually, mm -hmm. where it would load every other line and then start filling them in in between. But this one doesn't look like it's going to finish. I'm sorry. Hmm. I said this is that uh, demo I've been giving away for a long time on the uh, thumb drives. See if I can find another disc of GIFs. There was one that uh, was a city, I remember. Mm -hmm. I city GIF, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't pre prepare this, so it's. It'll also do, T it'll also do uh, TI artists. Mm -hmm. it'll load the TI artist picture. Okay. Yeah. 
the artist picks is at 926. We used to have a whole collection on the BBS, on the secret uh, BBS, on the secret uh, folder that you had to know, uh, named after a young oh, yeah, lady. Yeah, here's the artist stuff. You know, um, named for a young lady uh, who objected to it at first. So you had to go into the one that you had to type her name in. And uh, that was the secret there password. Uh, okay, so the program works. This is the TI artist picture called Batman. Okay, we could do a disc catalog. KC C Fisher. Okay. I don't think that's a King Fisher. Maybe it's Carrie Fisher. Was it F I S C H E R? I think it was just S-A-H. Oh, there it is. Somebody. Huh. Fisherman. Okay. <laughs> Fishing in the sea. Yeah. That's, that's not what I thought it was going to be. No, that's not at all what I thought. You got dirty lines. No, 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 no. I thought it was going to be uh, Princess Leah. Actually, it did, uh, that's got a color file as well as, oh, yeah, when well, TI artists would show up in color. Because normally these programs, that, like if I was running RLE Plus or uh, PI Artist. Try Marlene P, uh, M-A-R-L-E-N. Is that Marlene Dietrich? Is that the famous picture of her in the Blue Angel or whatever it was? No. No, it's Manga. Somebody named Marlene. Hmm. Sally P. One of these are just pictures that somebody has drawn of their friends. Oh, oh no. I swallowed my eraser. That's from Charlie, yes. Charlie Brown. That's, yeah. that's his little sister, mm -hmm. Sally. Tandy Coco? My Coco, yes. Okay. These are from Charlie. Max Headroom. TMNT. Well, I can see a team in the end again. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Is that one of the Ninja Turtles? Ninja Turtles? Yeah. Now, who's the uh, initials in the lower right corner? DTQ. DTQ, yeah, okay. looks like. Okay, we'll go back. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> Try the ladies. Oh, there's a second one there. Oh, is it? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. So these are artist instances? Yeah, yeah, artist. yeah, this is uh, artist pictures. Pictures. Instances are the smaller ones, right? Yeah. Yeah, because if it ends in a P, it's a picture. Yeah. If it ends in a C, there's a color file there, too. But any program like the artist or uh, this or uh, RLE Plus mm -hmm. will load the picture file, but won't, apparently this doesn't necessarily load, uh, load the color file. What'd you say, ladies? Yeah, I'll try ladies. Linda. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, more. Uh, those no, are, are girls from Robotech. Yeah. yeah. Or you probably uh, they are. are. Macross. Macross is the original. Um, yeah, because uh, Harmony Japanese Gold was only animated. like 20 minute videotapes. Right. And like every couple of weeks I'd get another one as it was coming yeah, out. Yeah, Harmony Gold is responsible for importing a yeah. lot of. And it was funny because those individual videotapes had to... more in them than the Maycross movie. Yeah. It's like they edited unimportant scenes out of the, uh, out of the Robotech uh, 20 minute series episodes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it was fun. I'll Everybody went pick nuts pick. over that. I think I'll eat you He's referring to the uh, oh. to the um, to the voice cartridge oh, oh, thing okay. on the uh, oh, one game. So oh, I'll okay. get you Bigfoot, but probably sounds more like I'll eat you Bigfoot. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and the toilet plunger that conquered the galaxy. Exterminate! <laughs> exterminate! <laughs> Those pests. 
Okay, so uh, <laughs> so they actually, uh, you just can't do it in color on the TI. Oh, look at the, look at the uh, name here. Uh, that's from the old, uh, uh, what the hell, I can't even think of the... Uh, CompuServe. No, CompuServe, that's it, CompuServe, yeah. Okay. Or everybody had a number. Which I think is a, uh, I want to say a derivative of the deck. The um, TOPS 10 system or something like that. Kind of. Digital system 10. No, uh, in those days, I probably actually knew more then than I know now because I've forgotten so much. So much. So I think that's what they ran on. They ran on the clusters yeah. of the digital equipment corporation deck system 10s or something like yeah, that. If you and don't, the ideas are actually. If you don't use knowledge all the time, it's so easy to forget, whether it's a language or whether it's instructions on how to fly a plane or, you know, anything. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't use stuff, it just slips away. And this is also complex and has evolved for so many years. I've forgotten so much now. We better start breaking down, I guess. Okay, well, we'll have to say good night then. Yep. Good night then. <clears throat> so, goodbye from all of us here in beautiful downtown Evanston. And uh, don't forget that uh, the fair is coming up in only a few short months, uh, November the uh, November the 2nd, I believe it is. And <laughs> again, I keep forgetting. But uh, we'd like to see everybody here at the Chicago Tea International World Fair. Um, it runs, uh, becomes a three-day event. We have a dinner on Friday, uh, the fair on Saturday, the banquet, uh, the infamous pub crawl, and then breakfast in the morning. And we have people standing outside waiting for us. So I think we have to we got break chunked. down. Okay. So no Bye for now. Waiting. I'll get everything hacked up. Refrain from the candid breakdown.